Hello, my name is Lou Jones. I'm the designer and the inventor of the Chrysalis 9500 control rate freezing system. Since 2013, this device has earned its reputation as the Rolls Royce of the control rate freezer industry as regards freezing bovine embryos or any sort of mammalian embryos. So we're here today to talk about uh, a different cryo chamber that we produce other than, other than the standard straw chamber, which holds 46 um, quarter ml straws for embryo freezing. This is called a VHC chamber. That stands for variable high capacity. This one chamber can accommodate cryovials on canes, or it can accommodate half cc straws or quarter cc straws, either in an annular configuration, such as this lifter shows for embryos for ease of access and seating. And yes, it's designed so you can put an ID rod on the top, or you can freeze straws in these very tightly grouped clusters, giving the chamber a 180 straw capacity when freezing semen for fast ramp applications. Um, that's what this video is really meant to be about, is how to utilize the freezer for, to obtain very fast ramps because a bit of manual intervention is required to do so. And that's why this chamber was actually designed the way that it was. We'll get into that. Note to self, when doing critical videos for the company, Always turn your phone on airplane mode, lest your video be rudely interrupted by a telemarketing call. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, we use different types of lifters in this five slot chamber. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there are actually five holes here, kind of like a, like a revolver and a gun, but instead of having six, we have five radial wells, and then we have one central well in the center of the core. Uh, we'll, a little bit more about that later. These are the two types of lifters that are employed. This one allows the straws, as I stated, to cluster around the annular area uh, of the, the, this tube. So you get thermal conduction from the bottom of the aluminum out the straw through this member and also from the walls of the chamber. To freeze semen, however, where the temperature demands are not as rigidly um, necessary or required, we use this clustered application and the heat is actually extracted in both directions. From the outside of the chamber, the latent heat is going this way, and we actually introduce liquid nitrogen into the core this way while the ramp is in session using a sort of tactile feedback approach with a controller, which I'm going to be demonstrating and is actually the point of this whole series of videos today. All right, um, to do this operation, we're going to need the, um, the Chrysalis DX 2.5 crowd bath holds 2.5 liters of liquid nitrogen in aluminum or aluminium if you are not in the United States uh, inner vessel. Um, this is a vacuum evacuated, very spendy liquid nitrogen vessel that we're using because after all, we're sort of in Hollywood here with the video, but you can just as easily use for this application, this styrofoam box. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't matter. This is just used to hold the dipper that we're going to use to pour liquid nitrogen into the core. Well, how in the world are you gonna do that? Stay tuned. One can appreciate that when all these wells are full of quarter ml straws, this micro funnel made of polypropylene, impervious to liquid nitrogen, will sit level. For the purposes of this video, however, it is not because we only have two wells filled. Why? Well, guess what? We only had enough straws to fill up two of the wells. That would be 72 straws we have hanging around. So that's why it's not sitting perfectly level, just FYI. Without further ado, let's set up to do a semen freeze, in this case, a bovine semen freeze. We're going to go to Run, select this program called Bovine Semen 1. The last program that you use always comes to the top of the screen. This makes it easy for routine use because um, you can always come back to the top one at the beginning of the next day. This keyboard is if I wanted to enter the name of the donor or the farm or any other details, but you don't have to use it. The program is still time date stamped. Now it's going to show you what it actually does. It's going to start at seven degrees, ramp at one degree per minute to five degrees positive, ramp at four degrees per minute to minus 12 centigrade. Then it's going to pick up speed as we begin to add liquid nitrogen at 40 degrees per minute down to minus 40 and 50 degrees per minute down to minus 140. And then it's going to finish. The bell will sound at the end of the program. So all we have to do now, and it doesn't really matter when you do it, is we push start and now it's going to say, wait to reach start temperature. This is a safety feature. You cannot start our program. The icon is missing until the freezer is actually at the starting temperature. So if I were 
If I had three hands, I'd probably lower this chamber into this bath with the T-handle on this PTEG lid. However, I don't have three hands. So let's just put it in here and it's gonna get a little bit upset because it's been at room temperature. So it's gonna bubble like weird science, impress your neighbors at Halloween and so forth. But <laughs> I'm a goofball at heart, okay? Um, this is our reservoir of liquid nitrogen, as I mentioned, that we're going to be using to decant small amounts of liquid nitrogen into the cryo chamber to achieve the ultra fast rates required to freeze mammalian semen of whatever species. Typically these rates are anywhere from 25 to minus 100 degrees per minute. This system in this configuration, believe it or not, can handle this. If we are only relying, okay, just equilibrated the, uh, broke the surface tension of the nitrogen. Um, if we were just using embryos, we wouldn't have to do any of this. The machine's completely automatic. But since we want these fast rates, we have to get the heat out of the straws quickly. And in a radial fashion, the circum circumferential design is key to our engineering in that the, all the straws receive the same temperature uniformly at the same time. Okay, so now what's happening is this is going to fall down to the start temperature, which was what? Well, I can't remember. Well, the chrysalis is designed so you can see it. Press view and it's going to populate and show you the start temperature is at 7C. So now that I know that, go back to here. I'm waiting for this thing to get to 7C. And what I'm gonna do, folks, I'm going to let the program run. The status bar is going to scroll all the way here to this sharp knee at minus 12, and that's when the action is really going to begin. And I'm going to add liquid nitrogen to approximate this ramp, and it will produce a data log of this, as it does for every run, that can be printed uh, anytime in the future, it's stored on an SD card in the rear of the unit. We'll be back. This here little gadget is key to our process today. In case you're wondering where I got this, I stole it out of a neighbor's semen tank. No, <laughs> not really. It's actually just a standard straight aluminum cane meant to hold goblets, which is what this is. This is a 13 millimeter diameter goblet. Goblet holds probably about, I don't know, 20 ml of liquid nitrogen. And uh, this um, is just a, what's called an aluminum cane. I bend it at 90 degrees, and we're using this as a dipper to go into this insulated gear of liquid nitrogen. And I can't say don't try this at home, folks, because actually I am at home. Anyway, that is going to equilibrate there, and this is going to be sort of our transport system to introduce nitrogen into the central core of the system as we're doing the very brief semen freeze programs, which typically last less than eight minutes. So it's not like you have to sit here all day, folks, and add nitrogen. Okay, we have reached start temperature. I just thought I'd throw this bit in. We haven't actually started the program yet. Remember that safety feature I told you of? Now you see we have a continue button showing up, and we push this to start the program. First, we can silence the bell, which sounds at the beginning of the program to let you know she's ready to go. And then we just push continue, touch it. And now there's going to be a status bar, which walks from left to right across the screen as you can see. So when we get to minus 12 over here at the knee of the curve, that's when the action is really going to begin. Well, naturally, I forgot one more thing. As it's progressing here, this is the expanded view of the status graph. If I touch this, it goes back to the normal uh, run screen. But if I touch the graph again, it goes into expanded mode, which we'll be using today. It's very important to know that to the left of the bar in green, although you can't really see the differentiation here, are the recorded temperatures of the actual program data. To the right is the demand temperature calling out the demand of the program. The way the temperature regulation in this system works is we use steady DC current to regulate via a computer operation built into the machine, um, a heating element which regulates the extraction of latent heat into the nitrogen heat sink, which is in here. And with this method, we get extremely tight control, as you can see. Ordinarily, we do with fast ramps, it drifts a tiny bit, but these specimens don't care at those high rates. So anyway, from status bar left, recorded temperatures, status bar right, temperatures yet to come. All right, we're approaching the steep knee in the curve here. And as you can see, uh, that would be, we're right about minus 11 degrees right now, and it's gonna hit minus 12. So what we're going to do here, right as it gets close to the knee of that curve, I'm gonna start introducing liquid nitrogen by pouring it directly to the well on the center of the core, just about like this. I take this device and pour it into the core, like that. And even though it gets very upset, now take a look at the screen. You can see how closely the desired temperature is going to 
line up with the actual temperature. And on that screen, while we're running this thing, I'm just, you can actually hear the frequency at which I'm pouring the nitrogen in, which is a pretty good clip for this fast of a ramp at 40 degrees per minute. Our goal here is to line up the two lines as the status bar is going across. If you pour too much nitrogen, not to worry so much because the heater, after all, is going to compensate up to the extent that it can. But this gives us a fairly linear temperature drop. And bear in mind that we only have to do it for about two minutes out of the whole program. And I'm just sitting here yakking. I should be watching what I'm doing. You see how that's deviating over to the right at the top? That means it's not quite cool enough. So I'm going to put in a little bit more nitrogen to bring it back into the line. As you can see, it's getting back into line with the actual ramp pretty effectively. I'm not filling this little um, dipper all the way either. Each time I'm only giving it maybe, you know, just sticking it in the, in the bath. Let's look up here and see what, what I'm doing here with this. Just introducing nitrogen into the, the micro funnel here. Okay, and then back to the freezer. Once we get down within a few, oh, 15 seconds of the program ending, I'm gonna quit pouring because in practice what happens is we can actually go too fast and it can overshoot the temperature. Look at that nice straight line we have from the knee at minus 12, all the way down to where we are now, we're down to like minus 120 at this point. Okay, and I'm gonna stop putting nitrogen in now because the program is almost over. That beeping tells us the program is over with. We go back here. We can see we didn't quite actually make it to minus 140, but it will get there in just a second or so. Stop the bell. That bell we can program in or program out as we want to. Now it's going to go past minus 140 and focus in as the PID uh, calculus algorithm, proportional integral derivative, uh, applies the appropriate DC current to the heater to lock it at uh, within plus or minus 0.04 centigrade. There we have minus 140. So there we go, that's it ladies and gentlemen. We've just frozen a bunch of bovine semen. What I'm going to do is print the result out so you guys can see this on paper. While we're here, let's take a look at the previous runs that I've done. I've actually only done two. This was today's run, uh, 22nd of January, 2019. I didn't do too great. What I did is I waited till I got to minus 12, then I started to pour nitrogen in. And although the ramp is linear and consistent, it just uh, lagged by a couple of seconds. So it wasn't bad on the overall scheme of things, but earlier, a couple of weeks ago, I did this one. As you can see, this one's very tight, coming down here to minus 140. This is where I added nitrogen erroneously. You see the green doesn't line up with the orange. They should line up, ideally, you should get the green and orange to line up if you're running a very tightly controlled program, such as a typical embryo program like this one. This is a bovine embryo program, and look at the correlation here between the green and the orange line. There really are not two lines. Down here at the very end, you might see a trace of green, but you can see the accuracy that this system has. I'm quite proud of this system. It's been on the market since 2011. In this particular chamber since 2014 early. Thank you very much for your attention, and remember always to chill.